Hello and welcome everyone. So in this video I want to talk briefly about gameplayability cost, ability cooldown and ability level. So if you see in our current configuration, we are shooting our projectile and we are not costing any mana and I can just rapidly match my button. So there's no sort of cooldown for this. Okay. So we're going to take a look at that and fix this. Okay. So navigate to your gas ability projectile. Now I'm going to show you this just for the projectile ability and you can extend upon this concept for your other abilities. So basically cost and cooldown are nothing more than just regular gameplay effects. Okay, so just search for gameplay effect and I'm going to call this GE projectile underscore cost and I'm going to duplicate this and call this one cooldown. Okay, just open up this cost gameplay effect close this and open it again so it opens up like this so cost is nothing more you can think like uh, damage but instead of decreasing the health we are going to decrease the mana so just add a modifier and it's going to modify our mana and we change this by like negative 20 now negative 20 is a bit too much for a simple abilities like this but i just want to show you this exaggerated effect for the example and for the cooldown a cooldown is nothing more than just a duration based effect so it's not going to modify anything it's just going to have a duration and i'm going to change the duration to like three seconds okay now another important thing to note is that these cost and cooldown do require these gameplay tags so for the cooldown you generally use these granted tags and for the cost you generally use this gameplay effect asset tag well that's the way at least i learned and it works so I'm going to be sticking to this so let's add a gameplay effect asset tag and call this vector dot ability dot projectile dot cost okay and let's make sure it's in the same hierarchy okay compile and save this and for the cooldown instead of this asset tag I'm going to add a granted tag and it's going to be character dot ability dot projectile dot cooldown okay okay so we have this cost and cooldown gameplay tags and now I want to use these classes inside of my gameplay ability class so open up GA projectile and inside of class defaults we have this section for cost and cooldown so that's exactly what I'm going to do for the cost I'm going to add this cost and for the cooldown I'm going to just add this cooldown now just adding these does not automatically apply these cost and cooldown to the ability rather we have to commit these cost and cooldown so just right after this play montage what i want to do is commit our ability so i'm going to search for commit ability now using this commit ability automatically commits both the cost and the cooldown but if you want to separate these just search for commit ability cost and similarly we have this commit ability cooldown this one okay so you can use these separately for example if you want to apply the cooldown after this montage and actually commit the cost after this gameplay event is received so you can do it like that okay so let's just test it so this time we should be costing some mana and we should have a cooldown on the activation so we have this cost and cooldown okay now I just want to increase this cost a little bit because I want to show you something. Let me change this to like negative 60. Okay. So I can activate my projectile only once because the cost is now not sufficient to activate my projectile. So this is a way to prevent your ability activation. For example, if you have very little mana, you cannot activate your abilities and things like that. Okay, so this is the use of cost and cooldown. Now we are going to take a look at the ability level and how we can manipulate these values based on the ability levels. Okay, so I'm going to navigate to my data table folder and I am going to import this CSV file. I've created this in Excel. Okay, so I'm going to import this as a curve table and choose the interpolation type to linear. By linear, I mean it's going to interpolate between a straight line between the missing points. Okay. So if I open this, we have the same rows over here and the ability level is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 up till 10. So it's going to interpolate the values between 10 and 5 for the abilities 5, 6, 7, 8 and similarly for the cooldown. 
okay and we are going to modify our cost and cooldown to use this table so if you see over here we have this scalable float magnitude and we choose this curve table and change the multiplier to negative one and I'm going to use the row projectile cost so this is going to act as a multiplier so it's going to multiply 30 by negative one to turn it to negative 30 okay and we can see if the ability levels up it's going to interpolate between the values up to a level of 10 okay so compile and save this and we're going to do this similarly for the cooldown duration we use the curve table and select the cooldown and I want this multiplier to be 1 instead of 3 okay so compile and save this and just to visualize what I'm going to do is just print the ability level over here so I'm going to search for print string and just search for yes ability level okay so print string is going to be over here and just to make it pretty I'm going to say append and just type level and use this like this okay so by default all our abilities are granted at level zero we have done this inside of our c plus plus so i'm going to give a way to the player to just level up his ability so navigate to your env folder and create a new blueprint of the type actor call this bp underscore level up okay and open this up now this is going to also take a plane and i'm going to change the size a bit okay i'm going to add a box collision and change this to overlap only on and change the size to like 100 by 100 by 40 okay i'm going to drag this like so inside of the event graph i'm going to create an event for on begin overlap and now I want to create an interface call to our character so he can automatically level up the ability. Okay. So going to our character class, open up this player character. Sorry. We need to first define this inside of our interface. So I'm going to add a new function and call this level up ability. And it's going to take two inputs. First one is going to be ability tag and this is going to type game play tag container this one don't use the other one the tag one and it's going to be new level and this is going to be our type integer okay compile and save this and inside of our player character class i'm going to implement this interface i'm going to drag this over here and just right click and search for change ability level with tag now this function was created inside of c plus plus just connect this like so and i'm going to comment this as well change ability level okay compile and save this and going to our bp level up let me say does implement interface and search for that ability interface if we do implement that okay so i'm going to send a message of level up ability okay and for the tag i'm going to give this the character dot ability dot projectile and directly just change this to level 10 so you can have some sequential values but just for the example sake, i'm going to use this to level 10 and i'm also going to verify that my g projectile class also has this tag corrected audibility of projectile okay so going to our level we are going to place this level up over here okay so let's go ahead and test it out so now we are using curve table so if i buy my projectile the server and client are at level zero and if i go through this our ability level should be at level 10 okay so it's costing me way less than it was at level zero and my cooldown is at one second rather than 10 seconds okay so this is the way that you use your cost cooldown and ability level another extra thing that i were going to point out over here is that this level up is present inside of the level environment so for example if you don't want to do this like this you want to do it on some keyboard input so let's try this keyboard 
M, okay, and I am going to just plug in this like this and break this and change the tag to break tile and change the level to level 10 and let's just say a print string so it says levels up okay so notice one thing that it's going to only level up the ability on the client and not on the server okay so if i shoot my ability it says server is at level zero and client is at level zero if i press my m key it's a client to leveled up and i cannot activate my ability and once I can activate my ability, it says server is at level 0 and client is at level 10. So this effect is basically input is only being called on the client and not on the server. So just be mindful of this fact that this function is called whatever character calls it. So if the server calls it, it's going to be called as the server. And because this is needed to be called on the server, because only the server can change the ability levels and manipulate the abilities. So it should be called on the server and not on the client like this. So a workaround could be, you can, for example, add a custom event and call this like level ability and just change this application to run on server. I use this, okay. And I have also updated my plugin gas associate to have the server only variants of this function as well. So you could use that plugin and use those functions. I'm not going to be updating this project because, well, this is a template and you have to work on this yourself you can use the plugin to call the server only version for this so just be mindful of these kind of functions and just be careful that you are activating these functions on the server and not on the client because this level is present on the server so it gets called for both the server and the client and this key press is just happening on the client and not on the server it just changes the ability level on the client and not on the server okay so just be careful of this so this wraps up our video for ability level and ability cost and ability cooldown. Okay, so before we wrap up this video, I just want to add a C++ function that will allow you to get the values of cost and cooldown inside of blueprints. So just to do that, we're going to add just one more C++ class and this is going to be an empty class basically. I'm going to call this get ability info. Okay, and it's going to be public and it's create class. Okay, so once we are inside of Visual Studio, I just want to navigate to the header file get this info.h and I'm going to just delete this because I don't need this and I'm going to paste my code on the source control, okay? And I also need a header file for this and this is going to be this one. It's not manually created because this is like a, an empty class, okay? So we'll have these. So basically what we have done is created a structure that we are going to expose towards blueprints and this is going to provide us with the cooldown, the cost and the cost name. Now the cost name is necessary because right now we are costing mana but you can have stamina as the cost or even health because there's nothing really stopping you from using health as a cost. So we compare this cost name to check if you are costing stamina or mana and we can do some fancy stuff over inside of the blueprints. Okay, And then move towards your CPP file. I'm going to delete all this and just paste this code from my source control. Okay, so basically what it does is it just initializes these values to zero, an empty constructor. And then it also provides a function to return these values in the form of structure. Okay, that we'll be using inside of our gameplay ability class. Okay, so once this is done, I just want to open up your gas gameplay ability class. Okay, so inside this header file, Yes, gameplayability.h. I'm going to add a new header file over here and I'm going to add this functionality over here. Okay, so this is that function that's going to be present inside of our gameplayability class that we can use to pass on the values of cost and cooldown. Okay, and then just navigate to your CPP file and the shortcut is control K, control O, and I am going to paste this over here. So let me just walk you through it a bit quickly. So what we're doing basically here is creating two variables to store our cooldown and cost effect. And if you check if these are valid, like they're not none. So we're going to initialize some variables to store these values and then pass it along to destruct. And these are temporary variables that are needed inside of the for loop, okay. We initialize these as empty. And then we get the duration magnitude from the cooldown effect. And if you have some modifiers, you will have to handle them yourself because Really, there's no need to have any modifiers instead of cooldowns. 
Okay, so we get the duration and the store it in this cooldown duration variable. And then we check if we have a non empty array of cool cost effect modifiers. Okay, so right now this is only working for modifiers. You have to work for yourself on the calculation ones and other fancy stuff. Okay, so it's going to get this magnitude at that level and then just pass it on to the cost and the get the name and then pass it on as the cost name. Okay, and then we are going to return this um, struct to our blueprint. Okay. So once this is done, just go ahead and compile this go to build and select build solution. Okay, so we are back inside the engine. I just want to open up your GA project tile class and we'll use this as an example. So just right click and search for get ability info, this one. Okay, and we'll drag this a bit over here and just plug this in like so. So we'll be using this print string and we'll be adding just a few more parameters from this. So if you just drag from here and say break gameplay ability info. I'm going to add these few more lines over here. So this is going to be cooldown. Okay, and we're going to tell the cooldown over here. And then we'll add uh, cost. Now, right now we are having only like one cost. Okay. You can see over here we have only one element inside of this array, this modifier array. Okay. So what we can do over here is just uh, add this pin and I'm going to say get and it's going to be from the index zero. Okay. And I'm going to add one for um, cost name. Okay. So we'll just add this equal to sign at the end to differentiate them. Okay. And this is going to get the index zero from this. Okay. Okay, so this is done and it's going to provide us the cooldown cost and cost name at that particular level. Okay, so let's go ahead and test it out. So if I activate my ability, okay, it shows me, if you see the output log, it shows me we are at level zero, the cooldown is 10 and the cost is negative 30 and the cost name is mana. Okay, uh, another thing I want to point out over here is that the cost is negative 30. Okay, it's exactly the same as we have written inside of the GE class. So while doing math, just remember that it's going to pass negative 30 to you and not positive 30 and you have to be careful while doing your math. Okay, so we're going to just level up our ability. Okay, and just try to activate the ability again. Okay, so as you can see, it's showing us level 10, cooldown is 1 and cost is negative 5 and the cost name is mana. Okay. So this is the way that you retrieve your values for these and you can, for example, like add an interface for this actor and then pass along these values to the character for the user interface or the visuals. Okay. Or what you could do is just copy and paste these functions inside of this character class. They're going to need a little bit of modification that you can get away with and then you can for example like pass on this GE class to that function over here like an input and it's going to return these values to you. So that's also invalidated to update your user interface. Okay. So this would be it for this video. Thank you very much.